Hello, this is a video on how to take apart the Chewy CoreBook Pro Intel Core i3 and this one had the 6157U processor. It's a 13 inch laptop and it had a 256 gigabyte uh, M.2 SATA drive in it, which had failed. So this is how you take it apart to get to several of the components. And in this video, I'll show you how to replace the hard disk, which is in it, or the SSD, which is in it. So you need to undo all the screws on the underside, except for the ones which are on the trap door, uh, which gives you access to a blank um, M.2 port. The screwdriver I'm using is a fairly small tipped screwdriver because they're very small screws. Also the three screws which are closest to the um, the hinge at the back of the laptop are a different size so just be careful that you keep those screws separate to the rest of the screws. And as I was saying, now we've got to the screws that are at the uh, back of the machine where the hinge is. Just be careful that you keep those separately because they are a different length of screw and you don't want to be putting them back into the wrong place. Even though I've taken this kind of machine apart several times, every time I manage to forget there are two hidden screws which are underneath the rubber pads at the back of the laptop next to where the hinge is for the screen. So you need to pry those rubber pads off and then undo the two screws underneath there. So there are the rubber pads taken off and undo the two and remove the two screws that are there. Now it's time to break the machine apart at the seams. So get a plectrum or if I had it with me, which I didn't in this instance, then uh, the small craft knife, which you often see me use in some, some of my other videos, would have been ideal. Uh, in this case, the plectrums are just that little bit too much, uh, too flexible and too difficult to get started on the machine. In the end, I used my fingernails and managed to get the machine partially open using that. And then I used the plectrum for the rest of it. So there's me using the fingernails, managed to pry it open a tiny amount and then get the plectrum in. Moving to the front of the machine, continue around and unclip the rest of it. Uh, 
and finally the last side of the machine. So that should have gently unclipped all of the clips around the machine. And there we go, the case pops off. So now you've removed the underside cover of the laptop, you can close the lid and start repairing the bits that you need to. So in the machine, we have several components that are easily accessible. That's the RAM, which is soldered in, so you can't change that if it fails. You have the CPU beneath this cooler, which will also be soldered in, so it can't be changed. You have the cooling fan there, the battery, which is not easily user accessible, but at least you can remove. Some kind of heat sinking compound underneath that bit of black plastic. And then what I'm about to unscrew now is the system drive, the M.2 SATA drive, which is uh, by default in the machine. Undo the single screw and the uh, card will pop up and you can just take the card out. This was, I think, a Widgetech or some other very obscure brand SSD card. I think it was a W800S model number. Then I forgot to focus the camera down onto the laptop again, but here is me putting in the replacement SSD drive, which is another M.2 SATA drive, although at least one of those sockets on that machine can also do NVMe. Um, I'm not sure whether both of them do NVMe, but the one uh, which is not used by default uh, does support NVMe. So screw that uh, holding screw back into place to keep the uh, M.2 card in and we should be good to put the computer back together. Before I do that though, I do want to turn the machine on and make sure that it detects the drive. Normally you'd have to go into BIOS to find this out, but the drive which I was using had previously had a working Windows install on it, so all I needed to do was turn the machine on and check that the Windows loading bars uh, started to, to go, which you can see on the screen there, the little spinning dots. And now I'm confident that the drive is working, it's time to put the machine back together. So get the underside cover, which you had taken off earlier, and place it onto the laptop and push down all around the edges to make sure it's clicked in and clipped back down where it should be. and then do the reverse of everything you've done to take it to bits. So screw in all of the screws, and in this instance I'm starting with the ones which go underneath the uh, rubber covers, or the rubber feet. So put the screws in, and then put the rubber feet back on. And then it's just the remaining screws. So remember the three screws which are closest to the uh, hinge for the screen are longer than all of the other screws. So make sure that those go back into the correct place. And then finally, every other screw. So that's another eight screws.
and you're done. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.